Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so, maybe for the question on the end of, of session, and now I would like to uh, have the next presentation by Louis Reis. Uh, the title is Fatigue Life Assessment and Failure Analysis of a Railway Wheel Material. Okay, good morning to everyone. Thank you, Chairman. Well, uh, my talk today is about the fatigue life of a railway wheel under the axle, on the axle fatigue loadings. So, um, this work was carried out by PhD student, Enrique Suarez, and uh, Vitor Ange, Professor Manuel Freitas, and myself. We are from Lisbon, Institute Superior Technic, and we belong to the Mechanical Engineering Department. So, uh, I will present briefly the outline of this work. I will define the objective of this work, and I will talk a little bit about the fatigue metals and the tests and the specimens that we are carrying out in our lab. And I will present in a brief way our approach regarding with the actual fatigue conditions. Uh, then I will present the material evaluated this study, and uh, I will present the results and some discussion, and I will conclude with uh, some final remarks. So, well, the question that sometimes arises if we uh, should or not consider the fatigue limit. Of course, for us, um, in certain cases, in certain conditions, there is a so-called fatigue limit, but in the other cases, no. So, uh, this is one point. And uh, now, regarding the new equipments and structures nowadays, new demands, so increasing expected lifetime, weight reduction, and energy saving, and so on, increasing lifetime and safety. So, for sure, we need to go beyond 1 million cycles, uh, and that's why this is the frame of this work. So we have received a batch of wheels with a bad performance, so now we want to understand why, and we want to evaluate what happened with the, this material. So that's why the proposal of this work, and it's all what I'm going to show you. So let me just present some uh, machines that we have uh, in our lab and the, where the, the tests were performed. So this is the VXL machine. We have two independent uh, axes, the torsional one and the axis one. And this is the VXL uh, sensometer that allows us to perform the tests in the strength control just to uh, compute the cyclic properties of the material. Uh, here, another kind of test that we have is uh, the axial fatigue but in plane. As you can see here, we have four engines, independent engines. And here, the microscope that allows us to monitor the crack uh, initiation and the crack growth. As you can see here, maybe you can uh, touch it a little bit here and here. So, uh, this is just an example to see if this is an out of phase, 180 degrees, we apply because the engines are independent. So, and here on the right, maybe you can. Here is a period in several cracks, uh, and after you have a dominant crack. So this is a way to monitor the crack appearance and the crack goes. Uh, moving to another test that we are performing to regarding this proposal of this study, uh, we are presenting here the main components of the linear axiopathic test. So as you can see, you can hear the transducer the booster, the horn, and finally uh, the specimen. So we can perform this kind of test in two ways, in power control or the specimen control. So to do that, in the specimen control, we have here a laser to monitor the displacement. And of course, we have to take uh, care about the temperature, because if not, they should or must, uh, might increase a lot and uh, uh, changes the properties of the material. So, uh, well, another question that arises here is the shape of the, of the specimen that appears here. So this is a real question. So we should know that, uh, we should guarantee that all the components, all the components must work at 20 kilowatts. So this is a, a, big, a big challenge. 
so how to address this question? So we have two ways, main two ways. Analytical design, by analytical design, but this is only uh, are used when the, the geometry is simple, the loading is simple. In case of uniaxial uh, conditions, it's possible to do that. But in other cases, it's not possible. Well, if you prefer to use the finite element analysis, well, we can. Uh, we have a lot of uh, solutions, let's say, for this case. But is of course beyond the analytical solutions. Of course, the design also should have in mind that the, the, the specimen should be manufactured, so you cannot invent a very complex shape because if not, it's not possible to manufacture. Um, well, here is just for demonstration how the, the does it works. Let's say so here in the middle in the uh, net cross section you have a node, so there's no displacement here, which means the maximum stress of course here. And uh, as you can see here, the first axial resonance model codes here near the 20 kilohertz. So it's what our objective. Of course, you need to validate this. So that's why I'm showing here in this picture a uh, string gauge. So we need to measure what is happening to validate our numerical model and to proceed with the tests. <coughs> so the objective, let's say, appears here in this graph is to obtain a calibration curve that allows to perform the test. So we record the strains using the strain gauge, and then we can proceed to compute the stresses. Well, uh, let me move now to our approach. So as we are dealing with multi of fatigue, I'm not sure if you are familiar with this, but let's say we can separate the, the bi-axial, multi-axial uh, loading in several components. In this case, our proposal, uh, the SGS definition is based on the we are separating the, the shear stresses based on the amplitude of the shear stresses plus a coefficient that takes into account the amplitude of the normal, of the axial stresses. So we can separate in shear and uh, normal axial stresses. So let me just to illustrate you for better understanding. Uh, if you can take, for example, a, a fatigue life of 10 power 5, as you can see here in this graph, well, uh, we want uh, to uh, compute the shear equivalent stress, okay? So we have here in the straight line, this is the reference, the pure shear stress reference is obtained by torsion uniaxial, uniaxial tests. So we have performed uh, 10, around 10 uniaxial shear stresses. So that's a period here, we obtain this curve. And then we are going to compute away uh, the AB and BC. So AB is the shear stress amplitude that appears here. And then we want to compute this distance, BC. Okay, so BC is the contribution of the normal or the axial component of the loading. So, and uh, if you obtain this, we uh, obtain the, the specimen phase, okay? Because this is the reference curve and appears from the uniaxial shear stress tests. Okay, so, uh, this is, a, in a brief, briefly way, the, 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 our proposal. So we take into account the amplitude of the axial stress, the, uh, the shear stress, and also, very important, the ratio. So this ratio is very important. In another way, you can say that we are transforming the axial stress amplitude in the, into the shear stress space, which is very important, but we can do the vice versa. And uh, the stress amplitude ratio is sensitive to the loading pass. What we are seeing here uh, is that we should take into account the combined effect of the shear and the axial stress. So what we need to do that, so we need to map the SSF, so this coefficient. And uh, how can we do that? Well, we have managed many, many tests. Because we need to take into account different stress amplitudes. I mean this, OK? We can do a lot infinite as you do. We, uh, as you can uh, take into account, different stress levels also, and also different stress shift angles. So as you can see, we can combine and we can attain many, many uh, different uh, state conditions. So uh, you have performed a lot of tests, and we have achieved this, which we call the a map surface for this material. Okay. So what does it mean? It means that the, the stress scale factor uh, is appears here, finding function of a polynomial, which is function of two variables, the amplitude of the axial stress and also the stress ratio that appears here is function of lambda. So what you can see from here is that uh, this coefficient is not constant value, varies, 
And also varies with the stress level. So it appears here the amplitude of the normal stress, as you can see. And this is the SAR, which means is the stress ratio appears here. So the coefficient SSF appears here and varies with this um, with this uh, variance. So this is in a brief way our model. Uh, this is the material used in this uh, study. So this is uh, a material was picked from the um, worn out railway, uh, railway wheel, as you can see here. And it should, it should follow this uh, European standard. Uh, this is the, the comparison, the reference for our study. Regarding the test performance, so we have uh, performed PENSA tests, uh, also performed microscopy analysis, high cycle fatigue tests, and the uniaxial and multiaxial fatigue, and also uh, we have performed very high cycle fatigue tests. Uh, regarding the multi-axial fatigue test in high cycle fatigue, so these ones are I'm going to present today. So uh, the case one is the reference case, so we have only uniaxial uh, conditions, as you can see here. And here we have the proportional length, so we have torsion and, and the axial length. And the non-proportional one is the, this circle that appears here is case three. So we have managed these three cases. Uh, here I present you the, um, the specimen geometry and also the dimensions. So this one it was used uh, based on the standard. Uh, it was to perform the isocophatic test. And this one was a dimension based on finite element analysis and is used for the very isocophatic tests. So this, the, the, the specimen is attached to the horn by this screw here. Okay. Well, moving to the results, uh, so this is just uh, for a reference uh, and for uh, I obtained an uh, average curve for the rim. So we have uh, made tests for the rim and for the web. And uh, well, this is uh, just an example. So the yield stress around 530 megapa. And here, this is the ultimate tensile stress uh, around 80, 80 megapa. So the microstructure, we have performed some uh, analysis also. So it results in a variety of light structure. It was expected, so nothing else more. Well, now regarding the uniaxial uh, HCF and the very high test in uniaxial case, so this is the results of David. So as you can see here, is well characterized uh, in, in terms of the uh, HCF. Okay, so there's a, a clear trend. And uh, here, well, we have performed the, in very high cycle fatigue. So we have obtained two results. Uh, more tests are running, so but we are beyond beyond one million cycles. So it is important to uh, perform uh, tests uh, beyond one million cycles. So comparing the, the last goal will be to compare these results uh, with a good uh, reference baseline material. Now regarding multi-axial HCF uh, tests, so we are doing uh, comparison between the, the specimens taken from the rim and from the web. So we are performing uh, the three cases appear here. Well, there's a similar tennis uh, between the rim and the web, as you can see here. Uh, we also can see that case three is the most damaged case that appears here, okay? And uh, well, we can say comparing the rim and the web that um, the rim presents more strength in case two compared uh, because we are in the same scale as you can see here. So we can say that the rim presents more strength than the, the web. Uh, now, applying these results to uh, our approach, SF approach, now just for case two and case one. So case one is always the reference. And uh, we uh, consider here not the shear stress space, but the normal stress space in this case. <coughs> so, and as you can see here, w what I did was I, I separated the, let's say for case two, as you can see, two minutes, okay. Uh, the, the components, so the components, this one is the normal stress component, and this one is the shear stress component, okay? In the disc, in the rim, so just to show the, the, that I can separate the load, and of course, the different slopes means that we have different behavior, different materials in the web and in the rim. So the same for case three, so case one is the reference, so the same for case three, we have different loadings. And now, just for the disc and for the rim, uh, we can see for case two and case three, well, we obtain um, different slopes, means different uh, materials. Uh, we also say that the SSF, the stress case factor that appears here, pairs with the loading, 
varies with the stress level and also varies with the, the material feature, the response of the material. So we have different curves here. What you have also here is the equation of these curves that allow us, in terms of the life, to, um, uh, to characterize, let's say, to design or to take into account the numbers of the cycles performed for each kind of loading, loading two, case two, and case three. Well, moving now quickly to the, we also analyze the fracture surface of displacements regarding the three different um, loading paths carried out. So we, as you can see, the crack initiation, crack propagation of the final zone, the rupture, and allow us to measure also the crack angle in initial conditions. So here I present you a table with the well-known well uh, criteria for, multi for critical open approaches, Finley, Brown, Miller, Fatima, Sosmis, Octopper, and so on. So we also measure the, the angles of the different specimens. Almost all are around to uh, zero degrees. So, uh, well, we can say that Smith, Lawton, Topper, and New One are the better performance and the better correlation uh, regarding our tests and obtaining results. Uh, well, we are moving now to the axis of the conditions. So we are moving uh, to, it's more complex. The shape of the specimen is a little bit complex. So just uh, I have three movies quickly. You can click, uh, pick one of them. So here, uh, the challenge is I because you need to compute the longitudinal plus this, the, you can pick the other ones, uh, the rotational, and then you obtain the combined exam. So we want to get the higher stresses in these strokes here, mainly in this middle stroke. So this is the main objective. So I don't need to. to the final remarks of this work. So, uh, and I will finish to invite you to attend our conference, next conference in Madrid in 2020. So, I, will be, I hope I will meet all together there. Okay? Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much.